Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers and to, today I'm looking at a book which is from Edward Elgar Publishing uh, Limited. It's this book here, Edward Elgar, A Family Business in International Publishing. This is called The Law and Economics of Class Actions in Europe. That's the side of the book. There's some comments about it at the back. It's subtitled Lessons from America in the New Horizons in Law and Economics series, and it's been edited by three people, Jürgen Backhaus, Alberto Cassoni, and Giovanni Romello. This is the book. It's not a very heavy book. It's got a nice index at the back, you can see. And you've got the standard footnotes, and a little bit of paragraph numbering, which you can see at the sides there. And, of course, you've got a very substantial amount of uh, reference material throughout. Uh, let me give an example. There are the references, conclusions at the back of each article, and then a lot of referencing. Uh, I found it a fascinating book because it's a very important area. There are three main parts to the book, and those, those are the list, beginning the list of the contributors, because there are a large number of them. What we say is this, because it's dealing with class action, so that's the title, and we say a transatlantic view of the law from an economic perspective, the aim being to try and give some idea of what we might be learning about this in Europe itself. Class actions, even the threat of them, generally strike terror in the hearts of those titans of industry who control big corporations. Even as we peruse this um, thought-provoking book from uh, Elgar, the reality of the class action used by individuals as a weapon against the might of a large company is currently newsworthy, as groups of vengeful investors gang up against Facebook as we go to press, following its recent disappointing flotation. Class actions, says a quote from Theodore Eisenberg of Cornell University, offer a rare opportunity for individuals with small losses to obtain redress against large companies and may provide important incentives to comply with the law. They exit in few countries, he adds, and he would probably also comment that in Europe they are relatively a new idea which has certainly engendered some controversy and debate. And I've had a number of people in my own law centre who've come up wanting to try to be linked with some sort of class action until I point out we don't actually have that sort of thing effectively in this country yet. Although times may change. The subtitle, as I say, is Lessons from America, and it will be of special interest, I think, to lawyers, legal scholars and theorists outside the US, as well as within it. And it's a collection of articles and essays, as I've uh, in, uh, given you uh, about what we, where we're going. Uh, the result, um, certainly the information that's contained in this book, is, I think, extremely helpful for the direction we might be going in, to really concerning European, um, concerning European civil law jurisdictions. Some 15 years ago, says Mikko uh, Vladimaki in his article on class actions in Finland, the idea of class actions was something new in uh, Europe. In Finland itself, partisan claims on class action cases in the US and their potential implications to companies were used as a strong argument to restrict the law scope of application. And the result in Finland, apparently, is that the law can be applied there only in civil litigation in cases between consumers and businesses. That's one example of, of many within, within the book. Let me conclude, though, by saying that I think this book's an excellent um, start in a direction we may well be going in. Lawyers, postgraduate students of law and economics, as well as policy makers and judges concerned with the issues raised by class actions, I think will find this book, with its copious footnotes, a valuable tool for further research in what is an emerging area of law for us. So thank you to all concerned. Bye-bye.